Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be wrapping up the 12 books that I read in September, so little mini reviews of everything that I read in the month. I've actually done a lot of my reading in the past few days of the month. I'm on annual leave at the moment and it is the first week off that I've had since Christmas and that was like entirely my choice. I've had a couple of like long weekends here and there but this is the first full week that I've had off since Christmas. I think at the start of us working from home it felt really pointless taking a significant amount of holiday, especially when we thought working from home was only gonna last maybe three months but now I know that unless there's a very drastic change in world circumstances I'm definitely gonna be working from home for at least until the end of the year. So the first book I read in the month is actually my favorite book of not only the month but I think it's probably my favorite book of the year and that is After the Silence by Louise O'Neill. Of course I was gonna love this book. I'm obsessed with Louise O'Neill. She is my favorite writer. This book is in a genre that she hasn't really fully tackled before and that is the crime genre and I think if you've enjoyed um like podcasts like West Core, which Louise had said herself was really an inspiration for this book. I think you will really enjoy After the Silence. This book is set on an island off the coast of Cork and it follows what happens when two documentary filmmakers go to this island in an attempt to find out what happened in a mystery that happened many years previously. The Kinsella family had a massive party at their house. On the night of this party there was a huge storm which meant the island was cut off from the mainland. And on the night of this party a young woman's body is found. Nobody knows knows what happened to this girl, whether she was murdered, who murdered her, but everyone knows it has to be someone that was on the island that night. No one was getting on or off the island because of the storm. The Kinsella family are treated with a huge amount of suspicion and we see this novel through the perspective of Keelan who is the mother in the family and we definitely know that there's something Keelan isn't telling us as a reader. While that is what is propelling the plot, you know, we want to find out what happened to this young woman, to what extent was Keelan involved, was her husband involved, was her son involved, Involved. Really what is at the center of this novel is a woman's experience of domestic abuse. Physical abuse, emotional manipulation, how that cycle of abuse can begin so subtly and how even women who might outwardly be very feminist and speak out against abuse for other people, they themselves can be victim to this kind of domestic abuse. That is ultimately what is at the center of this novel. Louise O'Neill always crafts incredible characters but particularly female characters. All of her characters are nuanced and complex. They are flawed while also evoking sympathy. I don't have a physical copy of this book yet. I read it from NetGalley but I am so excited to get my hands on a copy to add to my little selection of Louise O'Neill books that are like there. From one Irish author to another this month I also read A Savage Her Reply by Deirdre Sullivan. I am such a big Deirdre Sullivan fan so a huge thank you to Little Island for sending me this book for review. Savage Her Reply is a retelling of the children Children of Lear, which is a story from Irish mythology. Please, can this start a trend of more stories from Irish myth being retold? The very basic premise of the Children of Lear is that there is a king called Lear who has four children from his previous marriage. Jealous of his affection for his children, his new wife, who is a witch, turns the children into swans for 900 years. This novel really fleshes out that story and it tells the story from the wife's perspective. The writing is quite lyrical and this is a YA book. I would definitely say it's on the slightly older end of YA but I think because any teenage readers who are reading this in Ireland will have definitely have heard the story of the children of Lear that makes the more literary writing in this easier to get to grips with but in saying that you don't need any prior knowledge of the mythology to be able to enjoy this book. Like After the Silence this is a really nuanced and complex portrait of a woman who is carrying guilt. It's a story of jealousy and revenge but ultimately forgiveness. Obviously with it being a retelling of a an Irish myth, it's inherently culturally Irish. But in fleshing out this story, the author has given so much more depth to that and really explores Irish history, language, and religion. I think the word I would really use to describe this book is enigmatic. Like, it's just, it's a book that you just really sink into. I would highly recommend it. In September, I also read Clandestine by VJ Spencer. This is actually a very early proof copy and the finished version of this book, which is out in early October, and you can also pre-order now. <laughs> the final version has changed a lot from this one that I've read but this is a young adult dystopian novel that follows a group of young people who are all at camp clandestine. This is a camp that young people are shipped off to when they are 18. It's very regimented and restricted. What they wear is uniform, what they eat is uniform. They have very strict education rotas and exercise rotas and basically these young people are being trained for a war. We see from lots of different perspectives in this book but we are mainly seeing things from the perspective of Nia 
Galloway and we look at what happens when a select group of people at this camp become suspicious of the regime that they live under. It's not very often that I have genuine like physical visceral reactions when reading a book. The scenes of tension in this book made me nervous, the scenes of violence made me squeamish, the romance plot line made me swoony and also what I do really love about the romance plot in this book is that it's not overbearing or overpowering. It's really not the focus of this book but you know it's nice that it's there. <laughs> There's really seamlessly included queer representation in this book and this book is going to be part of a trilogy and I think that is going to continue throughout the rest of the books. I genuinely enjoyed reading this book so much like I know you're supposed to say that you loved reading your friend's books but like this is so good and <laughs> I'm just waiting for the sequel. Next I have I Am Thunder by Mohammed Khan. This is another YA novel and in this book we follow teenage girl Muzna who has always felt like she is quite invisible until she is noticed by one of the hottest boys in her school and what initially seems like an unexpected romance gradually becomes something much darker. This is a perspective that I've never read from before. I've read books about teenage girls who are Muslim but I've never read a book that really looks at how young people can be radicalized. It was a really eye-opening book which just you know really shows my privilege. I've never had to think about any of my beliefs being used or manipulated. The writing in this is absolutely phenomenal. Musna is a really distinctive narrator. I honestly I just can't believe it has taken me this long to read any of Muhammad Khan's books. I'm so excited to read the rest of their work. That's actually all of the fiction that I read in September. I do have a few more non-fiction and poetry books to talk to you about though. So I have Unicorns by Sky Alexander. This is a non-fiction book all about unicorns. <laughs> I got this as part of a set that I got with a, another very similar book on mermaids and another one on fairies. This was such a quick read. I read it in one sitting. It basically just takes you through the history of the mythology of unicorns and their representation in art, in literature, in popular culture. It takes you from the origins of where the idea of unicorns might have come from right up to the present day and the popularity of unicorns as like sparkly children's toys and also the significance of the unicorn as a symbol in the queer community. This book is not academically rigorous. I mean you can probably tell that. There's definitely like fantastic research that has gone into this book but there's also you know because you're looking at a creature that doesn't exist <laughs> Some of the resources in this book are like, I've made this website up, but like unicorns.org, like, you know? <laughs> but this book was just like a lot of fun. If you are interested in this kind of mythology, I think you'll find it a really fun read. And I did learn a lot of stuff about the idea and the concept of the unicorn through reading this book. I'm really looking forward to reading the other two books that I have that are about fairies and mermaids, especially because like those two creatures, mermaids in particular, I'm a lot more interested in as a concept and an idea than I am unicorns. There's not a lot more to say about this one, but like if you are interested in mythology I think you'll find it a lot of fun. Next I have Being an Adult by Lucy Tobin and Kate Poole. I have a lot of trouble with the concept of like adulting. Like I find it a really annoying turn of phrase that we've come to have. Like when I hear people my age or like even older than me being like oh adulting. I'm like yes you're an adult get the fuck on with it. <laughs> but it is actually now kind of a point in my life where some unexpected things have happened. Obviously 2020. And I've realized that there definitely are some aspects of my life where I really need to get my shit together like personal finances and figuring out how does one get a mortgage? How? This book is broken down into chapters that really help you with different sections of your life and the sections that were I guess relevant to me so things like personal finance, things like getting a house were really helpful and informative and it really helped break down concepts that were kind of alien to me and I think those chapters are chapters that I will really come back to when they are kind of more immediate in my life. Like right now I'm thinking like, huh, maybe, maybe, maybe I could get a mortgage, maybe. But I think when that's actually kind of something that's happening, I will come back to this book. And I think, think maybe other books as well. But I also think like, I'd just like to sit down with a person who knows what they're on about and have them explain it to me rather than learning it from a book, I guess. And the earlier sections of this book, I didn't find particularly helpful. But that's just because of where I am in my life. You know, like the earlier chapters in this book, I think are definitely useful for maybe people who have just moved out of their parents' house, like going off to university like it's very basic stuff like how do you cook a simple meal and how do you book your own doctor's appointment <laughs> there are other sections in it like buying a car that just weren't relevant to me but again I think if that's something that I ever wanted to do this would be a really great place for me to come to as a starting point in figuring out how to do that there was a section on getting used to your first kind of like professional job there's sections on emotional intelligence which I really appreciated I think emotional skills are often just as important as practical skills and they are often overlooked.
hooked. So I would recommend this book. Not all of it was useful for me and I don't think all of it will be useful to you, but I think it's a great starting point in kind of wrapping your head around some of the ideas that might just be completely unknown to you. <laughs> in September, I also read Not the Type by Camilla Thurlow. Camilla Thurlow is probably most well known for being on the 2017, 2018, 2017? One of the seasons of Love Island. And the title of this book comes from Camilla often feeling like she's not the type of person that would be expected in the environment that she's in. Compared to a lot of the other girls she was on the island with, you know, she was a bit more shy, a bit more reserved. And definitely in the earlier episodes of the show, you can definitely see that Camilla feels not at home and really out of her depth. But actually Love Island is a really small portion of this book. I mean, it, it's only like seven weeks out of her life. What this book is mainly focused on is her career prior to Love Island. Camilla worked in mind disposal. So she went to a lot of places of conflict or former places of conflict. She's been to places like Syria and Afghanistan and worked on making those spaces be safe to be habitable again. Or not even necessarily habitable, but just able for people to walk across. While she was in that job, like when she was in Love Island, she was not the type of person you might expect to find in that environment. And she does talk a lot about what it was like to be in that role as a woman, which I found really interesting. The book looks at some of the really difficult experiences that Camilla bore witness to, but also how she has struggled to process what she saw because she talks about how her trauma didn't feel important or valid enough and you know it wasn't her family that were affected. I think this book was absolutely brilliant and I think a lot of people will come to this book you know for that Love Island angle to it but really what you're getting a book about is humanitarian crises, about empathy, about recognizing your privilege. It's a book about mental health. I thought this book was really fantastic and I'm so glad that I read it. On the very last day of September I also read Breaking and Mending by Joanna Cannon who is probably most well known for being a fiction writer and her two novels The Trouble with Goats and Sheep and Three Things about Elsie. This is quite a slim book that is about Joanna Cannon's experiences of working in the NHS and being a doctor. It looks at some of the really difficult experiences she had as a doctor, some of the incredibly stressful and emotionally draining situations she was in. There are a lot of books out there that are about experiences of working in the NHS and to be quite honest I don't think we can really have enough. Every time I read one of these books it really just brings home how difficult it is to work in the NHS. There are very few moments of respite in this book. It is quite bleak. But if this is a topic that interests you or is important to you, it's really fantastically written. And once again, it really hammered home how incredible the NHS is. This next book kind of bridges the gap between nonfiction and poetry. This next book is Just Us by Claudia Rankin. This book's an amalgamation of poetry, of essay writing, of cultural analysis, of analyzing photographs. And it's a book all about white supremacy and racism. This isn't a book that gives you all of the answers. It's really a book that raises more questions than anything else. It interrogates social structures. It interrogates moments of racism. It interrogates structures of racism. Claudia Rankin is really trying to examine and chisel away at how society got to the point where it is still like this. This book is definitely more complex and difficult to wrap my head around than other books that I've read about racism, but I do think that's important. I found myself having to reread a lot of passages and trying to wrap my head around them but that's okay like these things are complex and it is going to take you some time to wrap your head around how ingrained a lot of these things are. The subtitle of this book is an American conversation and I think that's really exactly what it is. It feels like the author is speaking directly to you and that's what it is. It's a conversation. As I said she's not providing all of the answers. I think Claudia Rankin is a phenomenal writer. If I had only like one tiny criticism of this book is that I wish there was more poetry in it but that's just because I want more of her poetry. I want more of her writing. The next poetry book I have is Brand New Ancients by Kay Tempest. This is a narrative poem which is something that I really love and Kay Tempest's style is really spoken word rap style of poetry which is something that I love as well. I've read all of their collections now and I know I'm just gonna love everything that they write. Brand New Ancients is one of their earlier works and it's the tale of two families whose lives are intertwined. The story is also braided with classical myth and it really looks at who these ancient gods would be in the modern age. If any of that sounds appealing to you, I cannot recommend this enough. And another poet whose work I have loved for a very long time is Carol Ann Duffy. And this is her first collection, Standing Female Nude. I'd read a lot of these poems before, but I never read the entire collection from front cover to back. These poems are poignant and political while also being personal. They explore themes of memory and childhood and gender. All of the things that if you have read any of Carol Ann's poetry before, you would expect from her. But it was really interesting to see some of her earliest 
this work when compared with having read a lot of her recent work as well. Some of my favourite poems in this of course include the title poem Standing Female Nude. I also really enjoyed Education for Leisure and um, Alphabet for Auden was another one that I really liked. This was originally published in 1985 and it is many years later than that now <laughs> and these poems still left such an impact on me and I found myself connecting to them so much. I just, Caroline Duffy is just a phenomenal poet. And the final book I have to talk to you guys about today is an anthology of children's poetry, Fire Burn, Cauldron Bubble. And this is put together by Paul Cookson. This is the perfect collection for coming up to Halloween time. There's lots of different writers included in this collection, all poems about kind of witchy, supernatural, Halloween-y, spooky kind of things. Some of my favourite poets are included in this collection, such as Benjamin Zephaniah. Some of the poems are really spooky, some of them are like very silly and fun. All of it child friendly, but also very enjoyable for an adult reader. I do really enjoy an anthology of poetry that is centered around a theme and seeing what different writers do with that theme. It's really interesting to me. So if you're looking for a fun, spooky, Halloween-y read, then this was a lot of fun. You'll absolutely fly through it. Like many of the books actually that I read this month, I read it in one sitting. So that is it. They are all of the books that I read in September. Do leave me a comment down below and let me know if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them. They will all be linked in the description if you want to find out more about them. I will also leave links to all of my social media down below in the description as well as my coffee page and my Amazon wish list. And actually I've noticed hardly any of you guys are following me on Instagram. What's that all about? Please go rectify that so you can get updates throughout the month on my reading. You'll get to see what books I've read in the month before I upload my wrap-up videos. And if you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can see more videos from me. And if you've not read any of these books leave me a comment down below to let me know what you're currently reading. I hope you guys are doing well and I will talk to you in my next video.